today I'm going to make a fully functioning Rubik's Cube in Minecraft using the Create mod. Now before we rush into building, the first thing that we have to do is define what a Rubik's Cube actually is, which is pretty easy because it's just a cube. In all seriousness though, there are a few criteria that come along with this build. Number one, it has to be a cube with six uniquely colored faces. Number two, each face has to be divided into nine sections. And number three, each face must be able to rotate 360 degrees. Obviously that is hugely simplifying what a Rubik's Cube actually is, but it should be good enough to get started. You know what? I'm actually pretty happy with how this turned out so far. I feel like if you were to show this to the average person on the street, they'd probably be able to tell you that it's a Rubik's Cube, and I'm gonna take that as a big win. So now that we have the exterior of the cube done, it's good to go, it looks nice and pretty, you can tell exactly what it is, we can move on to the functional aspect of the cube, and there's only one of them, but it's arguably the most important thing of the entire build, because without it, this is, it's its just gonna be a cube. And that important functional aspect, if you didn't already know, is the ability for the faces to rotate. So to do this, it's very simple. We're going to go into the very center of every single face. We're gonna put down a radial chassis. Then we're just gonna have to double click on it with slime balls to make it sticky, replace whatever block we took, and if we take a quick look at it, hovering over it with a wrench, we'll be able to see all these highlighted blocks are now attached to the radial chassis. So if the radial chassis rotates, all of these are going to rotate along with it. So it's very simple. We only need to rotate one block then, and we will get an entire face of the cube to rotate along with it. So as you can see, I've gone and added the radial chassis to the center of every single face of this on all six sides. And that means it's time to go inside the cube where it might be a little dark and start working on the internal components in here. So we're just going to focus on one side for now to make sure that this actually works and does what we want it to do. So it's a bit of a trial run. But I said that we just have to make the radial chassis itself spin and all these spin along with it. So to make it spin, we're going to put down a mechanical bearing facing into it that's going to hold on to it. And when we give it rotational power is going to make it all rotate. Then we're going to put down a sequence gear shift, which if we take a look at the settings is going to receive rotational power, but send it in whatever increments we choose. And so its default setting is perfect for this turning 90 degrees in a forward rotation, which simply means that this will rotate it one side over and then it'll stop. Then all we got to do is give it rotational power here. And if we were to put down a button, we can replace these blocks and let's see if this works. Okay, so honestly, not bad for a first trial run. It managed to rotate this entire face right here, just like we wanted, but you might be able to tell right now what an issue is that we're running into that makes it a little bit different than a regular Rubik's Cube, and that is that this white, blue, yellow, and green, all these faces should be rotating along with it on this far side right here, and they're not. And that makes me think that we're gonna have to do a little bit of work to connect all of these in a slightly fancier manner than just using a radial chassis. Luckily, being the experienced builder that I am, I have a toolbox right here, ready to go, with everything we could possibly need to fix this entire build right inside of it. So let's take a look. And here it is. It's super glue, the holy grail of fixing things that are broken. It's honestly between super glue and duct tape. So we're going with super glue today, but if you do any sort of work around the house or anything really at all in the world, you will probably agree that super glue and duct tape are your best friends. So the super gluing should all be done now. And I do have to say that it was a lot of gluing that needed to be done. So I'm really hoping that this all works out. Pretty much every single block on here has either two, three, or four pieces of super glue on it, connecting it to other blocks, except for the very center three by three area of each face. So if I break these, you can see that the only thing that's sticky around them is going to be the sticky portion of the radial chassis, but pretty much everywhere else there's going to be super glue. So you can see here, we've got multiple things of super glue connecting these together. It's pretty much like that for every block. So I'm really hoping this works out. Otherwise it's gonna be back to the drawing board and either a lot more gluing or a totally different solution. So now we are back inside here. Nothing really has changed in here. And yet again, we are going to test out and we'll test it on the same color face, the red face again, to see if the rotation now is going to function correctly and scramble up these adjacent other colored sides when the red side spins. So same thing, mechanical bearing, sequence gear shift, creative motor, 
a button on top and there we go it actually worked <laughs> Oh my God, first try, how often does that happen? Honestly, I'm so excited, I just kinda wanna push it again. Oh my God, it's so satisfying to watch that. <laughs> the feeling when a building works on the first try is just so good, it is unmatched. So now we verified that all the different faces can in fact rotate properly, which is great, but you might be able to notice the next issue we need to fix if I push this yet again, and that is it's only going in one direction. And while that isn't inherently an issue because you can technically get it wherever you need to go, it's going to be way more annoying if you have to push this four times instead of pushing it one time to go in the other direction. So we need to implement a system here that's going to allow one button to rotate it one way and the other button to rotate it the other way. So we're just going to tear this part down. We're going to leave our mechanical bearing right here because we still need to rotate it. And then we're gonna put down a gearbox which will allow us to split rotation to either the left or the right. Then we're gonna put down a sequence gear shift right here, one right here, and then a creative motor here and a creative motor here. Now, in this case, we need to have one of these rotating one way, one rotating the other. So we should quickly verify that they are in fact rotating in the same direction right now. So that one's going to go, yep, so they both go the same direction. So all that means is we're gonna come in here on one of these and instead of having it be input speed forward, we're just going to set it to input speed reverse. So now, if we were to push this, it'll rotate clockwise. And if we push this, it rotates counterclockwise. And let's just get it back to its original setting before my OCD makes me totally lose it. Now, the last thing I need to do before I replicate this rotation controlling build right here on all the other faces is turn this from a manual control to a wireless control because I don't think anyone wants to be inside a Rubik's Cube controlling it. They'd rather be able to see it from the outside and control it from there. So we're going to break these buttons right here and put down redstone links on top of each of the sequence gear shifts. We are going to shift right click them with nothing in our hand to make them receivers. And then we're just going to set the frequencies for them. So I think our best bet is simply going to be setting them based on the colors of the faces they're corresponding to. And we're gonna need two different frequencies. So we're gonna do a double red set for the counterclockwise rotation and then a singular red set for the clockwise one. So we will have one button to send it clockwise, one to send it counterclockwise, and then we'll have one for each of the faces or one set, I should say, leaving us with 12 total buttons to control every single aspect of the Rubik's Cube from outside of it. Okay, so just to give you guys one quick glimpse of the inner workings of this when it's totally finished before we head outside and make sure that this entire thing works, but here it is. It's pretty much the exact same setup on every single one of these faces with one clockwise rotation aspect, one counterclockwise, and then one redstone link frequency for each of those. Like I said, resulting in what should be 12 total buttons to control the rotation of every single face. So the control station is set up it's nothing super fancy we just have two buttons for each color and then if we come below here we have all the different links set up so that we have the front row right here which will be the reverse rotation for each and the back row which will be the i guess it's not reverse rotation it'll be the clockwise rotation there and counterclockwise here so it should all be working. I have yet to test it out. So you guys will get to join me as I do my first trial run right here of the entire setup. So let's see if we push this button, if the top face rotates. Oh my gosh, it works and then goes back. It works here. It works. Okay, nothing's breaking. Okay, and then we can go back. Oh my goodness. It, so it actually does work. So there you have it guys, a fully functioning Rubik's Cube in Minecraft using the Create Mod. Super simple to work with. Unfortunately, I am not going to be mixing this up and solving it because I am much more of a builder than a Rubik's Cube solver, but hopefully you enjoyed today's video. And if you did, be sure to drop a like and subscribe as it helps me out a ton.